Do you have a husband now? I do, and it's so funny. So I did not get married until later, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother patted my husband on the back from the pew and said, you caught her. I never thought it was possible. <laughs> So you are a woman your mother warned you about she in a lot is. of ways. Welcome to another episode of the women your mother warned you about. The podcast that makes business sexy again. I'm Gina Tremarco with Sales Gravy, who is also the sponsor of this show. Yay. And who are you? <laughs> I'm Rachel Pitts, mommy, wifey, uh, loan officer at U.S. Mortgage Corporation and creator of your ultra fit lifestyle. Ooh, ooh, awesome. I am so excited about this episode with Kendra Lee, president of the KLA group. And she is also a speaker, a virtual speaker at Outbound this year. Super excited about that. Yeah, she's a lot of fun. She gets into some aspects of prospecting, which is her favorite subject. And if you're a salesperson, prospecting is either A, super duper fun for you, or B, a terrible, terrifying thing. <laughs> so, or, or like you like to, like you said in the, this episode, icky. Yeah, nobody wants icky. to be icky. Nobody wants no to be icky. No. Yep. If you like to be icky, we'd like to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this episode. She's awesome. She's got some great tips on prospecting. Also, uh, we got uh, we got her to share a little tidbit about what her and Jeb disagree about in prospecting. So that was super fun. So this is a fun and interesting episode with Kendra Lee. A little bit about Kendra. Despite starting her sales career in accounting, failing IBM's entry-level sales exam and being told she couldn't sell without an engineering background. Ooh, we should have got into that. Kendra Lee entered sales and proved those naysayers wrong. She turned her knowledge of numbers into a lead generation approach that propelled her to the top 1% of sales professionals for each IT company where she sold. Kendra founded KLA Group, a sales and marketing agency to consult, train, and do it for you to get more customers. She is the author of the books, The Sales Magnet and Selling Against the Goal. Again, super, super awesome information in this episode with Kendra. Welcome, Kendra. Well, thanks for having me, both of you. I'm very excited to be here. We hope you're excited because we were just talking about before we started the show, how we just like to warn uh, people who come to the show, you know, that we, you know, can be a little raw and sometimes we might swear and drop a couple words. And your, your response was, is it okay if I don't do that? And uh, we're like, absolutely. And then I think you started to say something about what your mother taught you. And so I think mm -hmm. Rachel, I think we need to ask her the famous opening question. The famous mm -hmm. opening question, mm -hmm. Kendra is, would you consider yourself a woman your mother warned you about? Don't overthink well it. You know, not overthinking it. I think my mom would be really proud of what I've done, what I've accomplished. But fun story for you, when I was in college and I said, OK, now I'm going to grad school because I don't think I can get a job with just a general business degree. I need grad school. And my mother's response was, what about a husband? And I was like, excuse me, here you've told me I can be anything I want all the time that I've been growing up. And now you're asking me in college, what about a husband? I'm sorry, right turn or what? So that's why you took me off guard, because it's like, on the one hand, I think I've accomplished what she wanted. But on the other hand, I didn't. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't leave college with a husband. <laughs> then you fit in. You Acceptable. Fit in. Yes. Okay. We'll keep her. I think I'm Rachel, blushing. we can keep her. So do you have a husband now? I do. And it's so funny. So continuing my story, <laughs> um, I did not get married until 
later, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother patted my husband on the back from the pew and said, you caught her. I never thought it was possible. <laughs> So you are a woman your mother warned you about in a lot of ways. Who knew? Sometimes people don't realize because you're just going along your path towards what you have desired in life. And then it it takes a question to really think about it. So I love Mm -hmm. it. It does. does. So thank you. That was fun. (laughs) Oh, it gets better from here. (laughs) Exactly. What other fun questions do you have for me? Now we're warmed up. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we're going to have some fun questions for you for sure. It's okay. so it's always so interesting for those who hesitate on that question. What's even funnier, Kendra, is when we ask men that question. Ooh, if they are the woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually we ask them to define what they think a woman your mother warned you about is because it's always oh. interesting to see what they say to that and what their hesitation is or they hesitate they for a moment. want to keep it clean and not say what they were actually warned about. <laughs> yeah, because they're worried they might offend us, which is pretty hard to do, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impossible to offend us. <laughs> so um so we're excited to have you here. You're going to be speaking at Outbound. We are also going to be uh speaking in a variety of ways at Outbound. Uh we're we're going to be on the main stage for a couple of days at lunchtime and um I'm I think I'm presenting one of my spontaneous selling talks in a breakout. You're going to be at Outbound. By the way, what what can you just give us kind of a sneak peek of what you will be talking about at Outbound? Yes, I actually have several different sessions. My big passion is prospecting. So Jeb and I always have a blast talking about it because we'll go at it where he thinks one thing and I think another thing and we just chat. But mine, I'll be talking about prospecting using email and LinkedIn. I'm also going to talk about how you coach the inbound lead mindset. So for your your team that's doing prospecting, how do you coach them? And then because we do a lot with lead generation in our business, I'm going to talk about lead generation strategies that you can use that link in with prospecting. So all prospecting, my favorite thing. (laughs) Well, there you go. And that's one good reason that if any of our listeners are not already on the way to Outbound to get signed up and registered, because I know there's a lot of salespeople, including me, up until I took the Fanatical Prospecting course, that shy away from prospecting, which is crazy because it's the way you make money. And <laughs> just I know that there's so many salespeople that can use the strategy, any strategies on prospecting to, in order to make it not painful. And now that I've done the fanatical prospecting boot camp. I actually just think it's so much fun to prospect and I wish I had more time for it. So hopefully you have some strategies for people to flip that script from ah terror in prospecting to yes, let's do more of it. I do. And that's what we'll talk about. You know, to me, I love prospecting because you get to meet so many people. I just love having conversations with yes. them. And then talking about, well, what are they struggling with? And the fact that we can probably help them. So I just, I think it's fun. What can I say? I I think we all are kind of on that same page. When you take the approach of this is about having conversations and meeting people and creating relationships, it, it really isn't about selling or prospecting. And I think Rachel and I back, you know, when you look at our backgrounds, uh, with performance entertainer backgrounds, uh, my entire career now, I've been in marketing and sales and PR my entire career with a performance background, but constantly was pursued to be in sales and fought it for years because I kept saying, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a salesperson. And then one day I woke up, I'm like, I'm a really good salesperson. (laughs) You know, we work with smaller companies between a million and 85 million in annual revenue. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, a lot of the people we talk with are business owners who are still involved in selling. And they'll all say, well, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a salesperson. It's like, you are the best salesperson that your company has because you know what you do and you can describe it with a passion that they may not know, as well as understanding why it was you created that business. 
So yes, you are a salesperson. You know, I, I'm curious, Kendra, if you've got an, uh, an opinion on this or point of view on this, how do you help people? You know, you've talked about coaching a little bit. How do you break people, especially the small business owner out of the mindset of I'm not a salesperson? It's understanding why they rail so against being a salesperson. And it's usually because they have this image in their mind that being in sales is bad, that you're going to try and convince somebody that they need something that they don't, or that you're going to trick them into buying. And so helping them to realize that really what you're doing is you're helping other people just like you to solve whatever their business mm-hmm. problem is with whatever it is that you sell. And if they don't need it, you're not going to try and convince them that right. they do, that it's right. genuine. Mm-hmm. And so. I think people are afraid to be icky, to be that icky salesperson, right? And the, and they and the reason that they are worried about icky is because they don't know there's an alternative to being icky. <laughs> like they don't realize you can just be genuine and ask questions and be interested and care about the person. Like mm-hmm. the icky thing is I think also what people get afraid of. And same, I speak from experience. Like I don't want to be that icky, annoying person calling like, hey, no, no, no. So, you know, it's it's so much fun to learn about the ways to not be icky. Uh, I, you just gave me an idea, Rachel. I think I think we need an ebook called the icky thing. The icky thing. <laughs> the icky thing. And Quick, go gonna, buy that what domain. Gonna, what, are, what are you going to put in it? All the ways that you can be icky and don't do these things. Uh, that, well, we'll call it the icky alternative. Oh, okay. Ooh. The icky alternative. Cool. Buy that domain quick when you get off this call. <laughs> You know, I have a domain addiction. I actually have Me to, too. I got to kill some of those domain names because they're yeah. racking, <laughs> they're racking up. Ah, but you are prepared when you have that great idea because you already own the domain. Thank you. That's Thank exactly you. what I do to you, Kendra. If I have an idea driving in the car, I will literally pull over and buy the domain. <laughs> of course, because somebody else might have that great idea. Hey, right. there's a certain Jeb Blunt who is buying one of my domains. I'm just going to say. So there you go. It must be good. Mm -hmm. And he's very good at sales. So I'm probably not getting all the money I should get for it. (laughs) You should, as Mark Hunter would say, double your price. (laughs) That's what he would tell you if you haven't heard him say that. I know. At the same time, you got to be careful with the guy paying your paycheck too. So... Indeed. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's a third and not double. <laughs> there, there you we go. go. We've worked. We've worked out a good deal. We've worked out a good. Hey, domains have a value. You have an idea, and sometimes they stick, and sometimes someone wants to buy them and turn them into something bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You never know. I'm curious. Speaking of Jeb, because you said the two of you sometimes will go back and forth on on things prospecting. Share with us. Share with us. Have you ever had a moment where the two of you don't agree on something? Oh, definitely. Oh, no, give us the on, juice. We even have it on, I think, a podcast. Mm-hmm. So Jeb and I have done a number of different podcasts and webinars in the past. And we've done a lot of them related to email because it was, man, I started talking about email, believe it or not back in 1999, when it was the first thing and people were trying to figure Mm -hmm. out what can I email? What can I email? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And Jeb and I uh, were preparing for a podcast and he said, I got to tell you, Kendra, I do not believe in using hi before a person's name. That to me just says that that is spam. Anybody who says hi, I'm going to delete them automatically. And so we had a whole discussion, disagreement around absolutely you say hi, because if it's a person and it's a friend, you're going to say hi to them. And so you're going to put that in the email because it makes it sound more personable. It does not sound like a marketing email. (laughs) So that's how we disagree. And the funny thing is now when I email Jeb, I always drop the hi because I know he doesn't like it, but I use it and recommend it everywhere else. (laughs) Interesting. I was just listening this morning to 
uh, the email section in Jeb's virtual selling book, and he talks about that. And he is adamant. S professional people do not put high in front of it. And I actually, I've stopped putting high, but a lot of the emails I send from a, on a day-to-day -day basis are, I don't really send prospecting emails. I send emails, business emails. So I do feel like in that scenario with a client that I, I drop the high and I get to the point because most of the time they want me to get to the damn point when it comes to their mortgage. You can still, you can still be warm and engaging. Right. The other thing that I pointed out to Jeb is Jeb does a lot with enterprise mm -hmm. size clients. We work with SMB and most of our clients are SMB. Mm -hmm. There's a whole different level of connection and community that you have with those size companies. And those people, you're building the relationship from the very opening of your email. So saying hi, and not just saying, Sally, you know, it, it warms it up. Now at the enterprise level, maybe you don't have to, but I don't, I still disagree that you warm it up. Yeah, <laughs> Kendra, Kendra, I'm with you. Let's just not tell Jeb that I'm with you. Okay, you don't have to, but I'll still disagree with him and he knows it. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because now I feel like I need to go reread. I mean, I read his books over and over again because I have to. But when I'm, you know, I do because I'm teaching his content a lot. Uh, but I'm also like, I'm literally in the middle of a consulting project right now with one of our clients where I'm writing all of their emails. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like doing a whole series of emails for them. Mm -hmm. because their sales team was struggling with them. So um, each one has a different, you know, tone to them depending on their target. So yeah. even this morning, you know, I'd sent, sent some stuff over and then they sent some stuff back and they changed the subject line. And I'm like, no, the subject oh, yeah, line yeah, says, yeah. the subject line says I'm in sales. I'm like, why are we fighting about? I'm like, this is the way you hired me to write these emails. <laughs> yeah, don't and, change it. I'm the expert. Sometimes you really have to stand up to clients that yeah. way. Um, we have a philosophy that says we're going to meet clients where they are. That goes back all the way to, you know, our foundation when all we did was training because we write content for clients as well. And we say, you know, if they're here, our goal is to take them to here. We used to have a goal that said, well, if they're here, they got to get all the way to here. And you have to move them gradually, mm -hmm. but they've hired you as the expert. And so your job is to say to them, no, I'm the expert. And yes, you want to send it this way. <laughs> well, and it's reminding them too, right? This, this series of emails that I was working on today was going out to cold, 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 cold prospects that don't know them. It's pretty yeah. cold. Like, so what was your subject line? Very well, there were, I gave them like a variety of subject lines to look at. So what they're, what they're doing is they have, um, they have a pair, well, it's a promotional company and they have these apparel boxes. It's very cool. They send out apparel boxes with like different types of apparel for, for your team. Mm -hmm. And so they were sending these out to HR directors. Okay. So I said, okay, let's tie back the pain to the value. What do HR directors care about? Mm -hmm. Employee engagement. Mm -hmm. How do we engage? How do we retain? How do we make people feel appreciated? So the subject lines all pertain to, there were, there were different versions and varieties of ways to engage your employees. Sim one simple way to engage your employees, right? It was all, it was along those lines, right? Right. And it tied in the value proposition. Right. So that when you opened it, attention. yeah. And when you opened it, then it's like, you know, most people, most companies now, even though we're coming through this, a lot of companies are, are now continuing to keep their workers at home. How do we keep them engaged? Well, this is one thing that we can do to help you. Right. So tying that value back. So they really wanted to stick to because they send a sample box. They really wanted to stick to request your sample box. Yeah. And that wasn't working. That's why they hired you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and and I love you guys in case they're listening. So this is this was a new this was a new approach to take because we had been working with them in a training capacity. Um 
they want people to request the sample box, right? That's, that's, that's the, their goal. That's the goal, sure. right? But again, we got to re, we got to remember got to pull them in that people buy for their reasons, not ours. And we have right. to pull them in to mm-hmm. get them to the, through the process of requesting the sample box. Mm-hmm. So they might not, that's not on their mind when they read, you know, when they read that subject line, it's like, what sample box? What? I don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Right. So that a, B, test it, Gina. Well, um, that, right. And I do that. So I give them a couple different subject lines to work with. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, let's go ahead and test that. Let's test that one. And let's test this one. And let's just see what the open rates look like. Mm-hmm. But again, because you have what? to, they, you know, I, I always say to clients, Yes, I'm the expert. These are the ones I think will work, but prospects will surprise you. So, oh, 100%. Expect. Exactly. I'm 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 actually um coaching someone right now, one of my coaching clients who he's like this but this subject line works for me and I'm like, well, if you're if you get the open rates. Now, he was getting something like some crazy number like 30 or 40% open rate. And I'm like, that's amazing. But what's the response rate, Mm -hmm. which was a fraction, right? So the subject line was working, but the subject line was not connecting Mm -hmm. to the content. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to action or something else. Right. Yeah. So you have to look at it. He got that type with the subject line. If you switch the subject line a little, might he get even more Right. and get the response rate? Right. Right. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of an art and a science. Definitely to, to put it all together. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, when it comes to who I'm also writing their video messages. So I, I tell people in video prospecting to say, hi, Kendra, when they do their video message. So I don't know. Is that wrong? Now we no. in Jeb, no. Jeb says that in videos, you should do that. Okay. <laughs> but not, but you don't say hi in a straight email is what his theory is. Fired. <laughs> You're not so going to get fired. That's why, that's why there are so many different ways to prospect because what resonates for right. one salesperson may not for another. And the key is, is that we want salespeople to be comfortable about prospecting. And so if listening to Jeb and saying, oh, if I don't write hi in the email and then I send it, they'll reply. So I'm going to send 25 emails. But if I say hi, oh, I'm going to doubt myself. So I'm not going to, or I'm only going to send five. And don't write high. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I think at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable with who you are and yeah. and know what is salesy content that, you know, so I think I think as salespeople, sometimes we get immune to things that we say and do and, and don't realize that the brain is processing it. The buyer's brain is like, warning, warning. That yeah. sounds like a salesperson. Mm-hmm. Yep. But the, you know what? We are salespeople. And it's not a four letter word and it is our job. And ultimately we are supposed to sell them something, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll get um, slightly embarrassed, I guess would be the right way of saying it when I'm, because I love selling. So I still sell for KLA, even though we've got lots of staff, it's still my thing because it's one of my favorite things to do. I love connecting with people that way, but I will get embarrassed when, you know, we're toward the end of the sales process and they'll say, Oh, there you go selling me. <laughs> it's like you do that so smoothly. It's like I've heard. <laughs> I'm not tricking you. I'm not doing anything, but you know, it is my job. And I sell stuff. Problem, <laughs> I can help you with this problem. And the only way I can help you is if I sell you so you buy it so we can work with you. <laughs> it's so funny because I've heard I've heard that before too. Mm-hmm. They're like, you're so good at this. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I am. You are right. So we got a deal. You know, it's interesting how salespeople will avoid selling like you're talking about, Kendra. I was coaching somebody the other day and she was talking about she has this Facebook group that she's amassed. It's got like 400 people in it. And she's like, well, I'm just trying to get them all to engage. And and so I... I keep putting out content that I think is helpful. And I'm like, well, what's the content? Well, and I said, well, what's the niche? Well, just general like this and that. And I finally drilled down. I said, 
when aren't isn't the point to sell them some stuff like when are you doing that she's like oh so I'm I like you're like spending all lot. this time like putting content out and you're not trying to sell them eventually at some point like what mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly you know and we have to write a lot of nurture campaigns in what we do but it's we tell clients, you know, at some point we have to ask for the appointment. We have to try and sell them something. We can't just give the nice educational nurture content. We have to, to use a marketing term, move them through their buyer's journey. <laughs> we want them to buy something. Well, you know, here's the other thing. Um, buyers, buyers, you know, get smart through the process too. That's why you know, Jeb talks a lot about disrupting and disrupting the brain. We, we, as buyers get used to like, Oh, Oh, they're sharing content. Okay. They're, they're slowly wooing me into their process. Like they start to pick up on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're just like, wait for it, wait for it. They do. But again, it's what our job is right. Same thing with marketing. Marketing is to inform you, to put it out there, and if you have a need, to make it available to you. And we want to move you through that journey of determining, do I need this? Why do I need this? We don't want to trick you, you know, for being really ethical. Mm -hmm. We're, We're showing you these are problems you could have. Here's how you could solve those problems. If you don't solve those problems, here's what could happen. So why don't we address it and and let's have a meeting and let's talk about how we can do that together. Right. And 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 really, if people are engaging with emails or content on social or phone call, if they're engaging, then they're interested. They just probably have those objections of like cost and timing and all the things. If they're engaging in the world we live in with so many opportunities to be engaged in other things. If they're engaging, then they're actually interested and they're probably sub- subconsciously expecting it at some point if they know you sell something. Yes. <laughs> so why not sell it eventually, y'all? <laughs> well, and that's where having the relationship is important. Okay? Yeah. There's one thing to just try and sell them something, but having that relationship that you've built with them and building the trust. I mean, the reason that we hear that people like how we sell or here you go selling. It's because we've done a really good job of establishing that relationship of listening to them and what their needs were and helping to show them how they can address it. We're not just the car salesman. Look mm-hmm. what I've got today. <laughs> right. It's actually, it, it sounds like a really great uh, buying cue when someone says, oh, here you go selling, because if they really are not interested, they are going to find a way to get off of the phone and not talk to you. Exactly. They just, they do. So it's exactly. kind of actually complimentary, I mean, this, even though it's a backhanded compliment. This, this, this kind of, this weird thing happened to me yesterday. I spoke to someone that you and I know, Rachel, and um, Kendra might know him too. And I reached out to him to (laughs) sell him an outbound sponsorship for the women your mother warned you about. Um, Now that I see we're up for sale. So (laughs) so we're up for sponsorship. So um, this is someone who likes us and knows us. And I'm like, you know, so I reached out. I'm like, hey, you know, let's catch up. We haven't talked in a while. And I started talking about the conference. And he's like, oh, I didn't know about it. I wasn't invited. I'm like, no, everyone's invited. You just buy a ticket and come. <laughs> and I'm like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm like, I want to talk to you about um, an opportunity to sponsor sponsors because we're going to be on the main stage for two days. And he's like, and he, his immediate response was, I'm broke. I don't have any money. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I know, but this is like a sales guy, mm-hmm. like ultimate sales guy. And it was so interesting because it was such a knee jerk reaction that, I mean, it's everything that we talk about in, in like the buyer's emotional reaction. And then how do you handle the emotional reaction? And I was like, Hey, I'm like, come on now. I go, yes, you do. You have the money. You're a sales guy. You should be successful because you are a sales guy. <laughs> then he's like, well, hey, I got to bounce because I got I to gotta call at the top of the hour. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so 
So you said, I got to go back and read Jeb's book on objection handling. <laughs> and go back and show him the value. <laughs> and and he did have he did have another call. So, you know, um, I think I probably just threw him off guard, um, completely threw him off guard. So, I mean, in a way, that's not a bad thing either. He didn't see well, it coming. He was expecting a different conversation. I know. <laughs> And, and you disrupted him. I did. Now, now he gets to think about it. Exactly. And he he actually emailed me like two minutes later. Hey, it was so great to catch up. Um, let's schedule time to talk again. Like, so, I mean, I, I'm not giving Good. up on it. Good. I didn't even get a chance to talk about it. He just had this knee jerk reaction, which I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of all across the board because people are having these knee jerk reactions about whether or not to spend money right now when the unknown, depending on the industry that you're in and, and how you were impacted and if you're, whether or not you're holding on to money or whether or not you are spending, right. It's like, it's just, it's so different mm -hmm. across the board. I'm, 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 I'm curious how, what you're seeing out there, you know, we're oh, a year into this, this virus, like what kinds of things are you seeing? Well, it's really interesting. The clients that we have worked with either were really hit hard and prospecting has been very difficult. And so they're all buckled down figuring out how are we going to reach more people or they were in high demand and extremely busy this past year. So mm -hmm. for past year one, we come into year two. And what's really interesting looking at these two groups is that group that was out there going, okay, we've got to find a new way of prospecting and we're prospecting, and we're prospecting, and we're prospecting. And while they're worn down, they're starting to see activity. Mm. And interestingly, those that were very busy now all of a sudden are saying, oh my gosh, we've got to cut back. We've got to cut back. We can't spend very much. So it's been interesting to see in these two very different mm. groups, what is going on. And how for ourselves, we've had to adjust our sales conversations because mm -hmm. we've people over here all of a sudden saying, oh, we got to save money. And then we've got the others over here. They're saying, oh, phew, we're coming out of it. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's interesting. So those who were busy, right? And we and I see that too in different verticals. For those who were busy and kind of just didn't miss a beat, Right. Mm -hmm. Something about their business kept them afloat during this time. Right. Mm -hmm. So does that mean they were not paying attention to their pipeline? I think they were not paying attention to their pipeline. They had to shift from um, how they delivered their services mm -hmm. to being more virtual. Yeah. And interestingly, because they're virtually delivering, they they now perceive there's lower value. So they're looking and saying, oh, we need to completely repackage our services because we're not doing it all virtually. We're not going out on site. Therefore, there is lower value. Mm. And so therefore, it trickles down through everything they do. We've got to cut our prices to mm. clients. So we've got to go find ways to reduce our spend everywhere else. Instead of realizing, wait a minute, you made it all the way through last year. You were virtual last year. They valued you last year. Why would they value you less this year when they wake up and realize you're doing everything virtually? So, <laughs> you, know, you know, Jeb's got the opposite opinion, right? When, when all this started going down, his attitude was, no, we're actually worth more mm -hmm. virtually. And when you look at everything that we do, and the value that we give, we are worth more because it's a, it's a completely different experience. Salespeople are. We remember we deal with business owners. So we've got these right. business owners who are out there saying not that their salespeople's value is less, but their own services value is less because they're delivering all their services virtually. And and that's not the case. Like you said, even for their services, that's higher value because they were able to do it no matter what your business model was. Right. It's a mind shift. 
Mm-hmm. It, ha- it has to be a mind shift that just because you've gone virtual doesn't mean it's of less value. You have to, you have to switch your mindset to there's more value. I mean, what is the value to everything virtual? I'm, I'm thinking about this right now of how do I adjust and adapt, you know, as we're coming out of it, I'm getting more and more cre- requests to go on site for training and speaking. And I'm like, whoa, wait. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Thank it's you. Actually, less efficient. I, I mean, so I much more done. Virtually. Yeah, I make more money staying virtual. I mean, like the the fact that I have to go on the road. Oh, this is a funny story. We won't go deep into it. Someone just asked me to be the MC at their event for two days, and they don't have a budget. And I'm like, what? Zero? What? <laughs> and you're calling me? What? Are you what? And pay my way there and pay my way there. And I'm like, yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. I I mean, first I just, I mean, I needed to, like, I I was concerned that you didn't have enough to give me because the, you know, I cost a lot (laughs) because there's, I I said, these are opportunity costs for me to get on a plane Mm -hmm. to fly somewhere. I'm out for two days. Right. Does, like, no, you're like, out for four oh, days, actually, because if the event's two days, you need two days to travel. So you're out for four days. Right. So like just balancing, balancing anyone that wants me to travel and balancing that with virtual, because for me to train virtually, I am required to be either in, in the sales gravy studio or my studio. So I can't just like be in a hotel room and set up my ring light and be like, okay, welcome to fanatical prospecting boot camp, and hope for the best with the internet connection. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true what you're saying, Kendra, because it's actually when you look at it the right way, as Gina mentioned, and have the right mindset, it's actually more efficient as well, because virtual events, whereas in the past, it was harder sometimes to get people to show up for sales training and, you know, presentations or what have you. Um, Now, people are more apt to show up, you're in front of more eyeballs and ears, because people can be right at their computer and hop right on to the meeting. Yes. So you're, you're actually serving more people. I like the virtual for training, but we've been training virtually for more than a decade because you're usually doing it in smaller bite sizes and people can go apply it as opposed to going to a conference um, going or doing a training where you've just got so many things and you're trying to figure out how am I going to apply it? What are the key, you know, the five key things I'm going to take away from that? Yeah. Overload. Conference mm-hmm. overload. I, I love that conference overload feeling, but you're so right that it's it's hard to take a three-day conference and go out and, and know which one do I start with? <laughs> like, Well, there's places for both, right? Like yeah. here we are, we're talking about outbound and we really want people to go to outbound. There they get to talk to all these different people. They're going to hear all these different ideas. Um, and there's great value in that. When we talk about training, being able to do it in those bite-sized bits so Mm -hmm. that now, you know, if I learn, if I learn how to get past gatekeepers or I learn how many activities I need to do, I can go practice that for a week and then come back and do the next thing as opposed to trying to learn it all at once and then say, where do I start? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I know I'm excited to see you at Outbound and hopefully I can attend one of your sessions if I'm not running around doing stuff. I am going to be virtual at Outbound. Oh, are you? I am. Oh, okay. I'm all virtual because I wasn't certain if I would have a vaccine or not when we had to make the decision. So cool. all my sessions are virtual, um, which I'm really excited about. I've done quite a number of virtual conferences me, yeah. A lot of conferences this year and it's just been a blast. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I've really like, once I adapted to them, I'm like, now they like, doesn't even phase me to do a virtual conference. Um, they're, they're super fun and they're super fun things you can do that way. So that's a great reminder for our listeners that you can go to outbound virtually. You don't have to fly to Atlanta. So there are virtual tickets available. Um, and you can see Kendra that way. 
or Rachel and I, and so many other really awesome speakers. It's going to be a really good experience. Kendra, it was so awesome having you on our show today, but we have a couple more questions, signature okay. questions to ask you before we let you go. Okay. First question, Kendra, how would you define the word sexy? Ooh, how would I define it? Having a powerful, fun, intriguing presence. Ooh, <laughs> powerful, fun, intriguing presence. Yeah. Very good. We have not had powerful and intriguing for sure. That's awesome. I love it too. I love that. Nice. Okay. That was, I thought that would throw you off a lot more, but that was epic. So (laughs) question number two. Yeah. Question number two is what is the best advice you've ever been given, Kendra? To not give up. And I'm Mm. sure you've heard it before, but persistence. Um, And for me, when I think about it in the context of the failures that I've had in selling or even in running a business Mm. and that you don't give up just because you had them. Those are things you learned and you're never going to do them again because you learned from them. So just keep moving forward. I I just, I want to, before you ask her this, this final question, I I just love that so much because, you know, Rachel and I were talking the other day about things we say to other people, especially women and especially, you know, women in business and business owners. I've been a business owner. Rachel's been a business owner. We don't hear that enough. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. We don't hear it enough. And imagine if you had that person saying, don't give up. Right. I just had instead of, ooh, gosh, maybe you should give up. (laughs) Oh, you had that failure. Maybe you should give up before you even start. (laughs) Oh, or you you know, you've reached as far as you can go. So maybe you should stop there. You're at the peak. Uh, Wow. Yeah, that was awesome. (laughs) All right. Last question, Kendra. What advice do you wish you had been given? I'm going to go connected to what we said that I'm going to give you two that you are going to experience failure. It's all part of what you do, but it isn't, it it doesn't have to hold you back. And if you persevere, and I'm going to use one of my favorite words, and you have process in place that you follow, then you will be successful. I love it. And remember, I'm in prospecting, right? That's my favorite thing, selling. And and I will tell people that you do not have to be outstanding. It's all about how much you do it. Do you follow your process? Do you do it? Do you stick yeah. with it? And even, even the worst prospector is going to hit on somebody who wants to set a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stick to stick to a process. I will say that probably the the one thing in the process that has been like monumental for me is the micro commitment, like making sure that I push through for every next thing. And once I put that in place, that one thing was a game changer for me. Now, I don't follow every process perfectly, but that's the one thing I never, ever not do. Mm -hmm. It's huge. I love it. You either win or you learn, right? Yeah. Well, Kendra, before we um, officially wrap up this show, if people want to connect with you, what are the best ways for them to do that? Well, of course, because we're in sales, the very best way is to call. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) ma'am. So our number is 303. Okay. Now I have to remember it. (laughs) (laughs) This is important, Kendra. Don't screw it up. I know there's lots of different ones. Seven four one six six three six. Awesome. Three zero three seven four one six six three six six. And of yeah. course, you can catch me on LinkedIn or email Kendra dot Lee at klagroup.com. Awesome. 
Such a delight to have you with us today. Our Warners can see you at Outbound or they can reach out to you. And we um, we can't wait to talk to you some more. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Such a blast. Thank I really you. enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. This is another episode of the Women Your Mother Warned You About that we are wrapping up. For more information about our show, check out womenyourmotherwarnsyouabout.com. For more information about me, you can you can go to the Sales Gravy website or you can see me at ginatramarco.com. And if you really enjoyed this show, share it with someone. Someone out there probably needs to know how to write a better email. One thing we did not get into with Kendra, maybe we can have a part two is I want Kendra's opinion on LinkedIn trolls. That can be another episode because it is a hot button for me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's come back and talk about that because yes. it's a hot button for me too, Gina. Okay. Part two, we're going to be bring Kendra back for part two on LinkedIn trolls. I'll be here to mediate so they don't get too upset <laughs> about the whole thing. And Rachel and Rachel's final words. If you'd like to find me, you can find me all over social media as the singing lender for your mortgage needs and ultra fit lifestyle for your fitness needs. And again, if you enjoyed this episode, head on over to iTunes and drop us a review. It helps us to spread more love to more peeps. And a special shout out to Sales Gravy, the sponsor of the Women Your Mother Warns You About. We're out of here, Warners. Bye. This really will get serious soon. Yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious. Hey, I did it. <laughs> <laughs>